Here we are in Hollywood, California, in the home of Linda Harrison, star of uh, Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. You played Nova, you've played, you were in Cocoon, you were in um, several other uh, uh, feature films Airport in your younger 75. days. Airport 75. Way, way out. And, and Guy for a Married Man. Yeah, that was the one with um, Walter Matthau? Yes. Very cool. Did you say Cocoon? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cocoon 1 and 2. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more of your background. I know you were a beauty queen in your teens. Well, it, it really started back, I was an acrobat, so I was on the stage a lot. And it's funny, you know, uh, everywhere I went, people would say, oh, you're going to be Miss Berlin, oh, you should be in the movies. They, my parents never said anything to me, but people along the way would say that till eventually it coincided with my desire to be an actress in a very small town, you know, right. in the 60s. I mean, that wasn't the best occupation to get into. But anyway, I became Miss Marilyn, came out to California, Long Beach, and we were on television the whole week. And I won first runner-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember, you know, crying because I didn't get the Miss American. And I remember, oh, he was around for the longest time. I forget his name. And he came up to me and he started talking about blue crabs. Well, you know, <laughs> ch the Chesapeake Bay is right. Right. And then they're noted for that. But at that time, I was 20 and hadn't really heard about the Chesapeake Bay oh, no. crab. So uh, I, I, he's, he saw that I was either crying or I was laughing. He didn't know. And it, he went on, you know. But uh, it was a blessing because the one who won it had to go around the country, mm -hmm, right. you know. And then there was another one that, uh, the universal one. So what happened for me, in which I understood the, the gal that won it wanted to be an actress. See, back there, it wasn't good to say you wanted to be an actress. Right. More so that you wanted to be a school teacher something along that line. Prim and proper. Yes, prim, not actors. And, um, but anyway, uh, there was a talent scout there by the name of Mike Metavoy, who's turned into a very successful movie producer. And he came up to me and he said, you should be in the movies. So it's just it's exactly what I wanted to hear. And so we um, took me to Fox and they signed me up and and I worked with a voice coach because I still had that southern accent, which I still have. Um, and then I went to the, and it's funny, this, this incident with uh, the movie, the first movie I saw as a premiere, the first premiere I've ever went to, uh, was The Agony and the Ecstasy, mm -hmm. and that, that was a Heston movie. Right. And that's when I met Richard Zanuck, and he became very smitten with me. Hmm. So from then on, you know, this, I was in California for three months, and then, you know, I meet him, and he's smitten. I mean, it's, it's like a Cinderella story. Absolutely. So he literally, all the parts that I have had, and they do it for the contract players, were through Dick. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Absolutely. My so your your Hollywood career was uh, laid to you on a silver platter by the yes. handsome prince. Yes, yes. And Richard is noted for the Sound of Music, Jaws, the Jaws, uh, yeah. Road to Perdition, uh, Oh God, The Verdict, just so many. Alice ones. in Wonderland with Tim yes, Burton. Yes, Tim Burton. Yeah, he worked with him almost twenty years. And his father was writing and producing movies since 1922. Exactly, so. exactly. And, and D, uh, Dick's first movie was when he was about 21, and it was called Compulsion. That was his first movie yeah. at 21? Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. So uh, and it was a little different between uh, my ex-husband with our two sons, as was he with his father. His father really groomed him mm -hmm. to be in the movies. Right. 
he would watch all the uh, the movies that Daryl was making. He had a projection room, and they would watch the films. Mm -hmm. And he would talk to him, and, and he met all of those people at that time, all the writers, all the directors, all the stars. And that's very unique. There's nobody else. There's just maybe a couple others that had that advantage of meeting so many people. In fact, Dick said in his documentary, he said, you know, stars did not intimidate me because I, was, I grew up around them. Right. And uh, so he was the perfect, you know, personified the perfect producer. And then with your sons, you didn't bring them up that way? No, no. Dick did not. He let them just, you know, be normal, play with their friends. He never, in that fact, they didn't want to go to the studios and their friends would say, don't you want to go and watch this? And they said, no, no, <laughs> they didn't. They wanted, they were just ordinary young men, you know, mm -hmm. having a great time. And you got out, you dropped out of acting pretty much when your uh, kids were young so that yes. you could raise your kids. Yes. Uh, what what have you been doing in the intervening years? Well, when I had my children, I still continued. Mm -hmm. I, I studied at diff with different teachers, and it was still on my mind to do more. So I think um, Airport 75 it came after I was married and had children. Mm -hmm. um, and then, was Cocoon? Cocoon was after that, Cocoon 1 and 2. Right. And then, um, I, I guess, did I say Airport 75? Mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, yes. Okay. And then after that, uh, it was Tim Burton. There was a very small part. You know, you got people get cut out so easily in pictures. Right. So, yeah, um, you were in the... Uh, Remake of the Planet of the Apes. Yes, the remake with Tim Burton. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting how that part came along, and it's a wonderful story. Um, that day was Harrison's birthday on the twenty third, and I was at Fox. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people wanted to meet me, you know, and so we had this long table, and the the uh, head of talent, head of the studio, came over and he said, Lynn, I just want to tell you uh, that Tim Burton's going to direct this movie. And I said, uh, well, I hope he includes some of the originals. And and he said, yes, he, he does that normally, you know. And so we go home, I would go home and we're having dinner on for Harrison's birthday. Mm -hmm. And Dick was there and his wife Lily and all of the, the kids and I don't know any grandchildren were there. I don't think any children were there. And so I remember um, I was telling him about my day mm -hmm. and meeting the head of the studio and the boys whispered to me, Dad would like to be producer. And uh, so uh, I remember walking to the dining room and, the, and he said to me, didn't you tell him that I was your husband at one time? I said, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> so he really wanted to do Jaws and the next day the head of the studio called and said, we'd like you to come on board as a as, uh, uh, producer. Mm -hmm. And that was a wonderful thing to happen to Dick is to get in with Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Well, oh, yes, yeah. you're right. It was Planet of the Apes, right. the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. And he liked Dick so much mm -hmm. that he said, would you come on for all my movies? Awesome. So there's Dick probably 65 or up, you know, right. in age, and uh, did all of his, produced all of his films. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you know what People at that age, usually their career is going downhill. Right. You know, but Dick's went up. Yep. And he, and the boys used to say, and myself as well, 
is that Dick did not live in the past. He could easily, what an extraordinary past he had, but he did not live in the past. He lived in the present. Mm -hmm. And so the demands on him were not as terrifying as someone who's living in the past or living in the future. He was, you know, grounded in the present moment and, you know, got these movies, you know, right. all, all, you know, all together for the ten, uh, for Tim Burton. Incredible movies, too. Yes. Unusual movies. Very unusual. Which you wouldn't think that Tim Burton and Dick would, you know, have a similarity between them, you know, but they did. Mm -hmm. They really worked well together. Well, see, you know, uh, Tim Burton's a very sensitive guy. Mm -hmm. And the, the producer is supposed to make his work pleasant. Right. Take care of all the other responsibility, let him do the creative work making the movie. And that's where Dick shined. And that was, that was terrific, terrific.